Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation about the Sutton Hoo Ship Burial. Before we get into the specifics of the Sutton Hoo Ship Burial, first let's look at the history behind ship burials during Anglo-Saxon England. So obviously, ship burials refer back to using ships as a way to bury the dead. The tradition of ship burials was a very important feature during the Vendel era. The Vendel era was the period in Swedish history where migration was at its peak. The Vendel era generally talks about the Germanic people, but because of the migratory nature of these people, they were able to speak different dialects. So the Anglo-Saxons, the Vikings, and other Scandinavians were a part of that Germanic group. So they held the tradition and custom of using ship burials as a ceremonious act of burying their dead. Ship burials occurred between the 5th and 11th century. Until the end of the 7th century, Anglo-Saxons would cremate their dead and bury them using different types of watercraft. There were three ways the Anglo-Saxon would bury their dead. They would use parts of timber, ravine or marine vessels, which is the large boat that you see on the left, or they would use smaller dugout long boats, which is what you see on the right, and they would take whoever they want to bury, put them in the boats, and then add all this stuff or treasures or belongings that they thought the person would need on their journey, and then bury everything under the ground. So there have been three confirmed ship burials in England, one in East Anglia, one in Snape, which is in Aldeburgh, and two in Sutton Hoo. And of course, today we are going to focus mainly on the two that were discovered in Sutton Hoo. Originally, Sutton Hoo was just an estate near Woodbridge, Suffolk in England. But now it is famous for being the burial ground for one of the largest Anglo-Saxon burial ships that has been discovered. Basil Brown was the archaeologist that made the discovery of the Anglo-Saxon ship burial in 1939. However, he soon learned it was more than just a gravesite. It was one of the richest Germanic ship burials found in Europe. The whole reason Basil Brown was able to make this discovery was because of Edith Pretty. Edith Pretty was the landowner at the Sutton Hoo estate, and she noticed that there was two large mounds on the land and invited Basil to investigate. There were two large mounds on the property, both from Anglo-Saxon ship burials. However, one of the mounds had been ransacked. There wasn't much in it because past thieves had discovered and taken everything but the other mound was full of the greatest and richest treasures that they could find. Beneath the main mound that they discovered was an imprint of an 86 foot long ship. So most likely they used a giant marine ship like the picture that we saw before. And at the center of the ship was a ruined burial chamber that was packed to the brim with treasures. Looking at the picture on the right, we can kind of see the burial chamber that they're burying this person in. And so that's what the bur burial chamber would have looked like. And they filled that entire portion of the ship with nothing but special treasures for this person to take on their afterlife journey. Some of the more extravagant treasures that were found included a metalwork dress that was covered in gold and other gems, a ceremonial helmet, which is what you see on the left, a shield, and a sword, which is what you see on the right, and a plate from the Byzantine Empire. All of these treasures were dated back to around 600 AD. Here are a few more items that were found in the ship burial. On the left, we have shoulder pieces from the person's dress or armor from whoever was buried. As you can see, there's a lot of gold, garnet, and color, as well as intricate designs. On the right, we see a gold shield. So whoever was buried was a very high ranking in status. 
There's no telling exactly who was buried in this ship, but whoever it was had to be a very high ranking and high status due to the insane amount of gold and treasure that was added to his burial chamber. For example, if we look at the golden belt on the right, it is made of over 400 grams of gold. So imagine if they put this much gold into a belt buckle, how much more extravagant was his other things. There are various reasons why we will never know who was buried in this ship. One of them being, when the ship was unearthed in 1939, any bodily remains had eroded due to the acid in the local soil, only leaving behind a human-shaped gap among the treasure. Even though we don't know exactly who was buried, we are still able to make many discoveries about the person and the time period based on the items found in the burial chamber. Sue Brennings, who is a curator of early medieval European collections, states that due to the efforts, quality, and quantity of the grave treasures, it is believed that an Anglo-Saxon king may have been buried there. Some of the treasures that were buried were actually a big help in obtaining a close guess as to who was buried in the ship. The archaeologists found coins inside of a purse, 37 gold coins, three coin-shaped blanks, and two small ingots. The coins all came from the kingdom of the Merovingian Franks, rather than just any English kingdom. At the time, Sutton Hoo was in the kingdom of East Anglia. Because the coins were from the East Anglia region, and due to the dates of the coins, it has been suggested that the burial ship may be the burial of King Rodwald, who died around 625 AD. King Rodwald was a 7th century king of East Anglia. East Anglia was a kingdom that included today's countries of Norfolk and Suffolk. He was the son of Titilla of East Anglia and a member of the Wolfingas dynasty, who were the first kings of the East Anglia. King Rodwald became a Christian during a stay in Kent, but on his return to East Anglia, he sanctioned the worship of both the Christian and the traditional Anglo-Saxon religions. For a time, he recognized the overlordship of Ochthelbrucht, King of Kent, but he seems to have gained some superiority over the land south of the Humber, with the exception of Kent. King Rodwald protected the fugitive Edwin, who was the afterward king of Northumbria. And in King Rodwald's interest, he fought a sanguinary battle with the reigning Northumbrian king, Othel Frith. They fought on the River Idol near Doncaster, and this was where Othel Frith was defeated and killed around the time 1616. Even though there's not a ton of history for King Rodwald, it is still possible to find out more about him based on what was discovered in his burial chamber. For example, Brunnings believed the wear patterns on the sword indicated that the sword was worn on the right side of the body, so it's believed that the king was left-handed. Brunnings also stated that the mourners laid the sword on the dead person's right side. This suggests that that is where the owner would have worn the sword during his lifetime. One of the most iconic items found in the burial chamber is the Sutton Hoo helmet. This helmet was found wrapped in cloth and laid near the left side of the king's head. It is one of four Anglo-Saxon helmets to survive. It was carefully reconstructed from shattered pieces. The helmet's mouth, nose, and eyebrows form the image of a flying beast or dragon. The helmet is covered in images, including fighting and dancing warriors and fierce creatures. The mask creates a dragon, with the eyebrows being the wings and the tail creating a mustache. Garnets line the eyebrows, but only one is backed with gold foil reflectors. They believe this is a reference to the one-eyed god, Woden. The mourners of the king chose and arranged the treasures around the burial chamber in a meaningful way to transmit messages about the dead person's identity and status in society. Here's a quick video to show an example of how the treasures were arranged around the body.